this beautiful, amazing um, human being that was in front of me that I would never see That's again. Not, that, was, that was sort of what happened. That's not something that I did. So I feel like that was uh, my proudest moment was the little girl in Iraq. 2008, um, and that was a good 20, 20 years after, uh, after the war. Uh, it all came to a halt and I pulled uh, a gun. We, we hear the horror stories. We hear the 22 so, uh, service members a day who commit suicide. Um, there's 50,000 veteran nonprofits in America and the problem is getting worse. My name is Stephen Cohn. I'm from central Pennsylvania, currently living in Budapest, Hungary, and I left the military as a sergeant. When you leave the military, that falls away. Having regrets is, is something we all live with, and there's, there's things that we do that we wish you wouldn't have, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that we can always make it better. Uh, if, if I look back on my life, no matter what it was, whether it was a suicide attempt or the, the war itself or losing friends, the things that I could control, I wouldn't change anything. I, you know, I don't have any regrets about it at all, even though it was some bad things, but I'm the man I am today, the person I am today, the father I am today, the husband I am today, specifically because of that and my wide view of the world and actually being open to uh, truth and honesty and integrity uh, in all walks of life is due to what I went through. So I, I would be doing a disservice to everyone I know now and everyone I touch now if, if I didn't have regrets. So no, I, I, don't, I don't have any regrets about the past. Um, I think if I, when, when I think about it, if I was ordered like you have to go, you're an American citizen, you have to go, I would go. Uh, I think the calling would be strong enough inside of me that I would have to go. But if I had a choice, I certainly would turn it down. I, I took 20 years to deal with what, I'm, what, what, what went through, what I went through, and, I, and I'm still taking time to deal with it every single day. I'm proud of my brothers and sisters who served alongside of me. And even if you have people say, well, they didn't really, you know, they fell, you know, selflessly, of course, but they didn't really do anything. Like soldiers falling in Iraq or Afghanistan have nothing to do with me living a life here. Well, I believe it does. I believe it does. I believe you know, energy is endless and the things that people do for us carry onward like a ripple effect and create radiant value in all of our lives. Um, so you know, I, I, uh, I'm a big uh, proponent of thanking those who served and proud of that, uh, that I served we'll as talk well. Talk about the ultimate sacrifice in the military. And yes, it is the ultimate sacrifice. It could be the ultimate sacrifice. But I didn't ultimately sacrifice myself. Um, thank goodness I'm here. And uh, I, I live to tell the story and carry the stories of those who fell onward, which I'm very proud to do, uh, Sergeant Dillon being one of them. But my ult ultimate sacrifice, I would have to say, is the, you know, my sanity at first, uh, when, I, when I realized that little girl in front of me just broke everything that I knew, that I thought I believed about myself. I, I thought I was a shining hero that would go to war and you know, fight and be awarded and be buried in the desert. And I was truly ready to do that. Most people forget that the Gulf War started and they were expecting 150,000 um, you know, Allied casualties because Saddam had five tanks for every one tank that we had. And they said, you know, we have no chance. And we were the very front. So we, we resigned and we're like, okay, we're, we're not coming back. So that was a sacrifice that I made in that moment. And it sort of left something on the battlefield, if I'm honest. Um, I think, you know, it took years for me to gain my optimism back. It took years to have, uh, to, to, you know, sort of build that belief in me up again that, um, you know, the world can be a good place. Uh, um, and I, I think my ultimate sacrifice was dealing with that over the last 52 years, or, you know, I guess it would be 32 years uh, that I'm dealing with that every single day. But like I said, it makes me a better person. You know, it, it makes me more, more retrospective. I, I dig deeper. I try to find out what it is, why, how, when, how can I use this to help others? What, what are the things that I do to get over these situations and how can I you know, pass this on to others so that they can have the benefit from that as well? Because there's a whole new generation out there of Iraq, Afghanistan um, veterans that are, you know, they went to war uh, you know, uh, 12 years after I did. So um, anything I can do to help, uh, anything I can do to give um, instruction or help, whatever it is that I've, that I've gone through, uh, I do it gladly. So my, I guess my ultimate sacrifice, pe people want to name it one thing, but my ultimate sacrifice is really uh, the time I spent, you know, fighting through what I fought through in my mind and in my life, trying to figure out who the heck I was. So 